Welcome to Strong and Balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with PeopleFit. Uh, before beginning any new exercise routine, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. Um, if you're doing this class for the first time, they just ask you to maybe have a countertop or a wall nearby that you can hold on to and only to work within what you are comfortable doing. With that, so let's begin with a quick warm up. We're going to start off feet about hips width apart, knees are soft. You're going to pull your head up off your shoulders. And we're going to do some gentle, small little neck circles in one direction. Great, and let's reverse direction. Fantastic, and some arm circles in one direction. Making sure that your core is nice and strong, belly button slightly in, knees are soft. Movement of the arms are gonna to wanna to rock your body. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your body nice and still. And let's go backwards or forwards if you are already going backwards. Fantastic, and let's come back and forth. And if you'd like, you can add a step back with a twist. So I'm gonna bring my arms back and my foot back at a diagonal. And as I start to check in with my lower body and see how far back I can reach and how much I can bend that front knee, you go to your level of comfort. Good. It's about dropping yourself down by bending that front knee as long as it's not protruding over your toes. And it's staying kind of back a bit for five, four, three, two, and one. Feet back about hips width apart, belly buttons in, and let's do some nice marching in place. Swinging those arms, as well as bringing your knees up and down. Fantastic. Feet a little wider than usual. Bottom out, head and chest up. And we're just gonna do a little bit of rotating side to side. Your head can come along for the ride. Or for you golfers out there, you're gonna work on keeping your head down. I know the season is beginning. And with that, let's come on back up. Feet back about hips width apart, toes pointing straight ahead. Let's come back on those heels and up on the toes, just gripping the ground as we come on up and down. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get into one of three positions, feet together, heel to the inside of your big toe, or the most challenging is one foot in front of the other. Knees are soft, belly button is tight, and let's do some head turns left and right. You can make some adjustments now. If you're having a wobbly day, bring your feet an inch wide or apart. If it's easier, you can bring your foot in front or you can simply lift the front foot up off the ground as you're doing this exercise. Great, and let's switch feet. Same exact thing, similar position and turn that head side to side. You 
You may notice that one side's easier than the other. That is pretty normal for most people. In three, two, and one. Let's get those feet back to about hips width apart. And now we're gonna practice our big oak tree, just a little sway. Although I guess if you see a big oak tree sway, maybe you should stay away. But let's just go back and forth. Good, and just start to listen to the weight going from the outside border of one foot to the outside of the other. Just as your foot starts to lift, your opposite foot starts to lift off the ground. That's how far I want you to go. Now with your right hand, let's reach out to the side, bend this knee, make sure your hip is in, hand on your hip. Let's touch your, he your heel to the inside of your calf and your toe to the floor, calf and floor. Right. Perfect. If this is real easy, we can add in arms and maybe not touch your foot depth back down to the ground, just kind of air touch. Don't bring it back in. So let's bring your hands in together and your arms and your leg out. Hands in, arms out. Good. If you find that you're doing a lot of stepping on that foot heavily, then make sure to keep this hip in, out and in, out and in. Good. I can hear my swim instructor from about the age of six. Pick an apple, put it in a basket. I think that was the side stroke. Pick an apple, put it in a basket. Good, and three, two, and one. Excellent work. Let's go over to the other side. Great, reach on out, hand on your hip. Let's touch and return. Good. Good. Bring everything in, everything out. Everything in, everything out. Good. Touch if you need to on the ground or air touch, which is just your hovering over for five, four, three, two, and one. Toes slightly in please. We're gonna come up on those toes and back on the heels. Toes and heels. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's turn your one foot slightly in your toes. Let's take a nice exaggerated step forward with the other foot. You wanna do this holding onto a wall, that's absolutely fine. Belly button in, we're gonna stretch out those calves in your back hip flexor by bending your knee and pulling your belly button in and let's hold it there. <clears throat> Besides remembering how to do the side stroke, I'm also now remembering being on the uh, doing races at the Hayden Recreation Center, swimming races and being about, I don't know, seven or eight years old and always getting called up to the girls' heats. And then, then I would have to walk up in my little Speedo and say to the person that just called my name, I, yeah, I'm a boy. And they'd say, okay. And I'd go back and I'd wait to be called again. <laughs> Good, let's switch to the other side. And a nice long step forward, belly button in, and let's bend that front knee. <clears throat> and 
And 15 more seconds, please. Great, let's come on back up. We're gonna try something a little different today. We're gonna to see how it goes. It may be very easy for some of you and a little bit more challenging for others. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bend our knees, bring our hand out to the side, and we're gonna try stepping on a diagonal. So again, if you're in front of a countertop, you're not quite sure of your balance, fantastic. We're gonna keep your right foot planted on the ground solidly. You're gonna step in front of you and then to the side. So see, I'm twisting my body on that hip. I'm just tapping and returning. Now, if you keep your knees straight, it's gonna be very hard to do this, but we're just gonna tap at a diagonal and then turn your whole chest to the side. Good, tap and tap. Good, tap and tap. The arm comes along with you, tap and tap, good. If you could do it without tapping, fantastic. You don't want to crank on your knees, so you don't have to twist very much. You might not twist as much as I am, but it's about looking over to that right and then tapping behind. Tapping in front and tapping behind. Just trying to get a little rotation at that hip while you're turning your head and body for three, two, and one. Don't be discouraged if that's kind of a harder exercise. We haven't done a whole lot of rotation, so we're just working that in. Let's go over to the other side. Let's set yourself up for, for success by pulling your hip in, bending your knee. Good. Getting some weight over onto that side. And let's tap in front and then twist and tap behind. Good. Tap in front. Open that hip up and twist behind. Good. If you want to try it without quite touching the ground or gently touching, even better. That left foot has to do a lot of stabilizing. Keep that knee soft and make its job easier. Good, for four, good, three, two, and one. I heard that this is the way Simone Biles started with her gymnastics career, with the side tap. Yeah, I think that's what it was. All right, hands on your hips. Let's step forward onto your left foot, bend your left knee, tap your right toe behind you, pitch yourself forward at your waist, nice long neck, and let's come on up and down. Kick your heel up towards that ceiling, keeping your right knee behind your left, if you need one finger on a wall, that's perfectly fine. The less support, the better. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch to the other side, bend that front knee forward. Tap your toe behind you. Good, and kick on up and down. You're probably looking at the ground five, maybe four or five feet in front of you. And eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, and one. And let's shake those legs out, please. Okay. We're gonna do a little bit of hopping or sidestepping now. If you have osteoporosis, if your balance is poor, then please just make sure you have something in front of you to hold on to. Uh, that's all we're gonna do is we are going to hop or step over onto the left foot, the right foot, the left foot and then hold it there, okay? You're gonna land on your forefoot if you're doing jumping with your knee soft so you can protect everything. So let's go left, right, left and hold. I like this exercise because sometimes 
when you trip over something, this is exactly what you end up doing, right? Okay, so left, right, left and hold. And if you teach yourself to land on that bent knee, you'll be much better off. Okay, let's go again. Left, right, left and hold. Good. One more, left, right, left and hold, 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 hold. Good, all right, we're gonna go over to the other side. So let's go right, left, right and hold. You know, it's all from the hip. This is where you're gonna balance yourself, good. Again, right, left, right, and hold. Good. Right, left, right, and hold. Good. Listen to your feet as you're doing this. It should be a nice gentle. I don't want that foot hitting the ground. Tells me you're either not landing on your forefoot um, or you're landing with a straight knee. Side, side, side and hold. Good, two more. Side, side, side and hold. Good, last one. Over to the side, over to the side, over to the side and hold it, hold it, hold it. Even if you have to tap once on that foot, I want you to continue to hold. Fantastic. Let's find about three or four feet of space. We're gonna do a little bit of a, a walk on the line. Um, so for most of you starting with your heel to the inside of your big toe is a good position for your balance. Others will be able to challenge themselves and bring one foot in front of the other. We're gonna pause between each step. So let's step forward and do a little pause. Forward and pause. Forward and pause and forward and pause. Let's step back, 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 and back. See how easy and challenging that was for you and make adjustments, either a little narrower or a little wider. I've seen a lot of this lately. Instead of people walking directly heel to toe, they think they're doing great. They're actually doing this with their feet, turning them, right? And they're giving themselves that extra width. So if you are walking heel to toe and you think you're doing great, make sure that one foot is directly in front of the other, okay? So let's step forward again. Step forward. Step forward. Step forward. And step forward. And back, 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 and back. We're going to go forward again. You pretend that you are, you are a woman standing on the moon or walking on the moon. Let's take a nice slow step up and then step in front. A nice big tall step forward and step. Big, tall step forward and step. And one more. Great. Let's lean backwards. We're going to take a big step backwards, nice and slow. Good. Big step slowly back. Keep those knees bent. Step back. And step back. Excellent. We're going to get on to the floor or into bed to do a few more exercises. If you have a glass of water and want to grab something, and if you own a resistance band that you're going to use, good time to pull that out. 
Okay, we're going to start off with the band on if you own a band or you're using it. Otherwise, we're going to start off in a side line position. If you're going to be using a resistance band or a mini band, that band will go right above your knees. You come into a side line position. Whatever position your neck and shoulder are comfortable in, I know some people will uh, prop themselves up on a pillow, which is fine, or on their forearm. Knees are bent, hips are slightly flexed, hand is on your hip, and we're gonna open and close that clamshell. Good, open and close. My hand here does not move. I don't want this exercise to be about my lower back rotating back, it's all about my hip. If it's really painful to do this, you know, you can either flex the knees up or extend them back a little bit to get away from some of that. Good, three, two, one. We're gonna do a fire hydrant, which is staying in the same position. We're gonna lift the whole leg now and then back down. Whole leg and down, keeping the knee bent. Your top leg is mirroring the lower leg. So you're gonna land foot to foot, knee to knee. Good. And for this one, it's important to keep the hip down. So I'm holding my hip down for three, two, and one. Let's straighten out both of those legs now in line with your body. Bend the bottom foot back for stability. Roll your hip slightly forward. Now extend your leg back towards the other foot. And let's come up and down, not allowing that foot to land on the ground. If you need to have it land on the ground, that's fine. But you're not going to have a rest break if you do it this way. You have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. If you have lower back problems um, or shoulder problems and you want to skip this next exercise, that's fine. We're going to head to the other side in a moment, but I'm going to have you come straight down and we're going to work on a plank. Okay. So my elbows are going to be right underneath my shoulders. My hands are going to be clasped, clasped together and you're going to gently pull your belly button in. And if you don't have things like osteoporosis, you're going to lift your hips up off the ground from your knees, or if you can, we're going to come right up onto the toes. Okay. And we're just going to hold it there for about 20 seconds. Again, don't work through any back pain. And five, four, three, two, one, and gently come back down. Let's roll over onto your other side, and we're going to do the other side. So again, same exact exercises, knees are bent. We're gonna do your clamshell opening and closing. Good. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's do your fire hydrants, lifting the whole leg up, but with my top hand pushing my hip down. I wanna keep that hip down away from my ear. I know that's a big distance. Ear to hip, I guess it's all connected. Good. And eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, 
and one. Let's straighten your legs out in line with your body. Let's bend the back, bottom foot back. Roll your hips slightly forward. Extend your top leg back. And we're gonna come up, come up six to eight inches. Trying not to let that foot land on the ground. Toes up, pointing straight ahead. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come on to your back. You can leave the resistance band on if you have it. We're gonna work on some bridges um, or some pelvic tilts. So if you have lower back issues, you're gonna simply push your lower back flat into the ground, relaxing your legs. So when you do that pelvic tilt, you should be able to wiggle one leg and then the other. But you're really trying to push your lower back flat. If you don't have either of those things, you're just gonna bridge up and hold or you're gonna hold your pelvic tilt and down and back up and down. You're not hyper arching your back. You just bring your hips up a little bit off the ground and three more, two, right? And one. Feet and knees together, arms are extended out, and we're just gonna do a little bit of lower trunk rotation, just allowing both knees to come side to side. Great, just rotate through that lower back, controlling the movement with your abdominals, so when your legs go, when your knees go all to the side to get them back, pull your belly button in and rotate around. Pull your belly button in and rotate. For five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take that band off. I'm gonna ask you to bend up your right knee just a little bit, cross your left ankle over that knee. And with your right hand, you're gonna to try to pull that knee across your body. If everything goes right, you'll feel just a little stretch, gentle on the outside of that hip. We were working those uh, muscles earlier. If you're only feeling a pinch in your groin, a lot of times I'll just reset that leg by bringing it down and coming back up to see if I can get away from that. Good. Let's go to the other side, cross the ankle over. With the opposite hand, you're gonna pull that knee across your body. Try to keep your back flat. That's an important part to this. Most people can rotate all the way around, but all the movement is coming from their lower back. Good, soles of your feet together. Let the knees fall down to the side. Palms on your thighs, just to give your adductors or your groin muscles a little stretch. And you're gonna hold it there. And then if there are other exercises you typically do on the floor or stretches, this is a good time to do them. And thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.